Micah Worlds Season Four, Episode Seven. Stephen Hawking. Star. More than three times the uh-huh. size of our sun. Stephen Hawking. How? With a collapse. The gravitational forces of the entire mass oh, need to move the fourth wing. The electromagnetic forces uh-huh. of individual atoms and so collapsing uh-huh. inwards. If the star is massive enough, it will continue this collapse, creating a black hole where the warping of space-time is oh. so great that nothing can escape, not even light. It gets smaller, smaller. The star, in fact, gets denser as atoms, even subatomic particles, get literally crushed into smaller and smaller space. And at its end point, what are we left with? Ah. A space-time singularity. Space and time come to a stop. Hmm. How thoughtful. Okay. Right. She has talking to Graham. If Einstein is right, or if general relativity is Michelle. correct, then yes. the universe is expanding. Cool. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, if you reverse time, Ben has the Stephen Hawking. All right. So, what if I reverse the process all the way back to see what happened at the beginning of time itself? Oh, time itself. how good. So the universe. Getting smaller and smaller, getting denser and denser, hotter and hotter. You as mean we have... wind back the clock? Exactly, wind back the clock. Wind back the clock. Is that what you're doing? I'm done. <laughs> you're winding back the clock. <laughs> 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 oh, you're not going to get back to the beginning of time. You've got to go back and again. Oh, keep winding. Keep winding. <laughs> Until you get... <laughs> Singularity, space time singularity. So the universe born from a black hole exploding. Keep going. What do you mean keep going? What? Before the universe began. No, 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 no. Keep going, develop the mathematics. Skip. Skip is cold, mocha, not a disease. Very good. Push it as hard as you can. Push it. Push it. As hard as you can. What do I just press it to take care? Hey, come on. One, two. One, two. Four, three. Fourth finger, fourth peg. It's a progressive neurological disorder that destroys the cells in the brain that control the central muscle activity, such as speaking, walking, breathing, swallowing. The signals that muscles must receive in order to move are disrupted. The result is gradual muscle decay. Wasting away. Eventually, the ability to control voluntary movement is lost entirely. I'm afraid average life expectancy is two years. There's nothing I can do for you. What about the brain? The brain isn't affected. You'll 
thoughts won't change. It's just that we'll eventually no one will know what they are. It's hard enough. I'm ever so sorry. Ah! Uh -uh. Next one. Hey, next one. Come in, Stephen. Welcome, Stephen. Morning. Would you like to take a seat? No, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, Stephen, in summary, um, as we know, chapter one, full of holes, uh, lacks mathematical support. Professor Thorne? Chapter two, not really original. Uses a lot of Roger's ideas. Well, at least you run with them. Uh, chapter three, too many unanswered questions. I agree. And then, of course, we have chapter four, this black hole at the beginning of time. Space-time singularity. Indeed. Brilliant. Brilliant, Stephen. <laughs> Superb. And therefore, all there is to say is well done. Or perhaps I should say, to be more precise, well done, Doctor. Bravo, Stephen. An extraordinary theory. <laughs> 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 So what next? Prove it. Prove with a single equation that time had a beginning. Wouldn't that be nice, Professor? The one simple, elegant equation to explain everything. Yes. It would indeed. Thank you. <laughs> next one. Hi, next one. <clears throat> Stephen, James was telling me that you have a, a beautiful uh, theorem. Um, that, that proves that the universe um, had, had a beginning. Is that it? Hmm. That was my PhD thesis. My new project disproves it. Uh, disproves it? Yeah. Oh. Um, so then you, you no longer believe in the creation? What one believes is irrelevant in physics. Irrelevant in physics. Oh. <clears throat> I see. Stephen's done a U-turn. The big new idea is that the universe has no boundaries at all. No boundaries, no beginning. And no God. Oh. Oh, I see. I, <laughs> I thought that um, you'd prove the universe had a beginning and thus a need for a creator. Um, <laughs> my mistake. No. No. Stephen is looking ah. for a single theory that explains all the forces in the universe. Therefore, God must die. Well, uh, why must God die? I, I don't see. The two great pillars of physics are quantum theory, the laws that govern the very small <laughs> particles, electrons and so on, and general relativity. Uh, yes, Einstein. Einstein's theory, the laws that govern the very large planets and such, but quantum and relativity... Don't tell me. They're different. They don't remotely play by the same rules. If the world were all potatoes, then easy. You could trace a precise beginning, as Stephen once did. 
a moment of creation. Hallelujah. God lives. If you incorporate peas into the menu, well, then it all goes a little... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just all becomes a godless mess. Oh dear. Oh dear. Einstein hated peas. Quantum theory, he said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. He's not only plays life, but he throws them where we can't find them. God is back on the endangered species list. <laughs> oh my god! I expect your coat. Oh, physics is back in business. Yes. <coughs> physics is back in business. <laughs> The next one. Oh my god, I'm getting crazy. Right, next one. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? What the fuck? Il a une pneumonie. Il est maintenu en. He has a life support machine. Je ne sais pas combien de temps. And enough that in a long way here we live. She was in so much. Need to know whether my staff would just to discover the venator. Try to bring him run from the uh -huh. aesthetic. It's uh -huh. resuscitation. You have to bring him run from the anesthetic. Are you sure it's what you want? The only way of winning him off the ventilator will be to give him a tracheotomy. A hole in the neck, bypassing the throat. He will never speak again. He gets everything he needs. I will have him transferred back to Cambridge. He may not survive the journey. Yes, he will. Next one. Nicks. Nicks. Are you a mum who's tired of being in credit card debt, council tax debt, or even gambling debt? Are you looking to write... <laughs> oh my god. Oh, this is not it. I know the group, you can choose the character inside that group by blinking again when I say the colour of each letter within that group. Apparently. Let's just try. Green. Blue. Pink. Blink to choose the colour of the group of the letter you want, Stephen. Green. Blue.
talk. Alright, this is my favorite one here. Yeah. As you can see, uh, it's height adjustable and we can change the angle to whatever Steve wants it at. You know, it's cutting edge. So how does Ooh. it work? It uses a very ah. simple interface that scans through the alphabet and selects each letter one at a time. I mean, using this technique, the professor can expect to write about four words per minute. Good. Less than one a minute. <laughs> Yes, and what I've done is taken the components from a, a telephone answering system, actually, to convert the written text into synthesised speech. I mean, the voice sounds a, a little bit robotic, but um, should we give it a try? Okay. Is there a clicker? Okay. Right hand. Yeah. There you go. Welcome to the future. My name is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> it's American. Exactly. Oh my goodness, well, is there another voice? That's the only one they, they have at the moment. I think it's great. <laughs> oh God. Next, the next one. I have asked the lady to travel with me to America. She will look after me. Good. Wait, Rachel, what's going on? Hold on. Yeah.